we are talking about how to sell tree preservation and we think that the best way to do that is to take you right back to a job that we did last July 30th. It was uh, the last of the month. We're in the middle of a, a drought. It was hot and here is the sequence that we went through as we um, acquired this job. The owner called me on the phone and said that I've lost a maple tree, another one uh, uh, fell down in the storm, I don't want to lose any more trees, will you come out and look at them because I think you know more about it than I do. And I said, well, that's probably true. I said, let's, uh, let's uh, uh, schedule an appointment. He says, no way. He says, I'm too busy, I'm in the construction industry, I've got three crews out and I have absolutely no time to give you. I says, will you go and look and prepare a proposal for me on this? And I said, of course I will. And so that was contact one, the inbound call. Contact two was the inspection, which I came out here and I found out that here is one of the subject maples here. And you can see where the root collars were already exposed and there was a tremendous amount of mechanical damage and a lot of the drainage that you see here was from the sap suckers. These are birds that peck holes to suck the sap and when the sap comes out it draws insects and that is part of the, the way um, diseases are transferred in this kind of environment. So what we did is said, proposed to him a wheel and spoke radial trenching pattern with the trenches inoculated with earthworm castings, NutraSmart uh, biofood, and a liquid biostimulant. We did 65 gallons per. We distributed all of that around each of three maple trees. We'll take you to each one of them right now in a minute. We're standing right here at one and we're here on a follow-up visit. I sent him an email proposal, the total of which was $2,250. You can review it in your PDF download and you'll see exactly how this was constructed. And so now we, uh, uh, on, on contact number four, we came, executed, did the job. We went to all three of the trees and did everything that was proposed that he accepted in the bid that included uh, mulch over top of the critical root zones of the trees to protect them. Remember now, it was the middle of July, it was very hot, and there's no way we could go in and just completely expose the critical root zone because it was in this kind of shape. Let me walk you right around here and I'm going to show you. This is outside the critical root zone. I'm going to try and get... Okay. Okay. You can see where the needle has gone into the red. Okay. All right. Now, eight months later, I'm going to walk you right over here. Okay. This is what we did. And I'm going to show you something. Look at this. Look at that. This is exactly what you want to see. And this is what we came back to check on. So on number four, when we did the job, covered all this up, we're now on contact five. We are following up. I called him and said, would it be all right if we came and showed up in your yard and did a, an additional evaluation of how the maples are doing? He says, oh, of course, it would be great. Please do. I'm looking forward to hearing what the results are. So our first test was this what you see me doing right here. I can go almost anywhere in the critical root zones of these trees and I've got aeration. All right, now I'm going to go to my bucket for a second and I'm going to glove up and I'm going to come here And I'm looking for root growth. Of these trees. Okay. Ah. Look here. You're starting to see it right here. You see it right there? See those roots? Those are the fine tree roots that we are promoting the growth of. See right here? Here's more of it. It grows out. And these are lateral roots. This is really the bread of life. You'll see it 
intermixed into all of these all of this dirt here and this was completely non-existent how do I know that let me cover this back up right here I'm gonna show you now let's go right over here and there was nothing over here but hard ground and grass roots this is one of the biggest competitors for tree health that we see in many of these designed ecosystems and what, what I'm talking about is these fine roots here get first call on all of the water the nutrients and air in this particular area here and we had to break that pattern up cover it with mulch and you've already seen what the results in airability are when we complete this and so this is once again contact number five this is following up and we're going to recommend that we have a number of fresh marks here where the sap suckers have been you've seen that we're going to recommend a spray bark treatment for all three of the trees and probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 175 to maybe 275 dollars we have some other things that we're going to look at in the landscape but for the moment right now let's go and walk and look at the other two trees that we treated and see if we get the same similar results we're here to check contact number five this is follow up this is what's going to make you some money if you follow them and develop that contact relationship with them that makes them have confidence in your ability world-class backup with the ANSI standards that you can learn about each one of these trees appear to have this black staining on here and this is what happens as a result of the sap draining out of these holes and down the uh, the the, uh, the tree will have to come back again uh, a little later in the summer when we see this but let me do a quick check here I'm gonna look down here and we're looking for roots and yeah buddy we've got them that's exactly what we're looking for that right there this is the kind of environment that you need to create so you see all those nice hairy roots there that is what they use to absorb the biostimulants up oh, and we even got a <laughs> our companion here we hope to see a lot of those this of course is an earthworm red wiggler whatever you want to call it and you can see all of these little roots here you have to create an environment in the base of the tree for these roots to grow without this type of growth you are not going to get recovery and what the owner asked me for in the beginning when he called me was he had just lost a maple tree had lost another one to storm damage he doesn't want to lose anything else what does he do and this is the actions and so far so good let's walk to another one take a look at it all right this is the third of the three maple trees I'm going to pull this limb down a little bit so that we can look and see what kind of bud break that we have and we've got some nice flowering it looks normal uh, all of the branches have budded out they look good and of course we've got another follow-up treatment coming that is going to verify size shape and color of the leaves these are the kinds of watch outs that we have ask the owner to look for and as he finds these deficits he can tell us about it we'll put those in his report and we'll be able to uh, begin to catalog and document now along those same lines let me just tell you the only way that we're going to be able to do that is if we tag a number I think I've got my tags right here we're going to tag and number these trees as we go all right this is the third of the three maple trees that were treated and we're going to go down to the critical root zone and see i'm out here looking for roots all right because roots are i can already feel them up oh, look at here earthworms that's a good sign that we've got a good balance uh, it's not too acid and it's not too 
we're looking for roots. Here they are. Here's a good example right here. These are the roots that we're looking for right here. These little hairy roots here. Now, without the kind of tree protection actions that we initiated, we did not have to do a root collar excavation because since they had grass growing all the way up to the trunk, there was huge amount of mechanical damage. That's one of the reasons why we encourage the use of mulch skirts around the trees because it'll keep the, uh, the lawnmowers and the weed whackers away from the trees. So we eliminated that. We aerated and decompacted the critical root zone with the wheel and spoke pattern. Then we inoculated with a biofood earthworm castings and NutraSmart and then we used a liquid biostimulant to activate everything and inoculate this with a, uh, the microbes next necessary. Mycorrhiza fungus and a whole bunch of other stuff. You'll hear about that in another section. And so once we mulched, we got great water late in the summer and obviously everything has begun to pay off. The trees are leafing out and what we'll do since this is contact five this is our follow-up, and he's wanting to hear more information about his trees, how they're doing, and the $2,200 that he spent last July, is it paying off? And we're gonna be able to give him a good positive report, and we're gonna look around and see what other trees might be at risk in this ecosystem so that we can give him advice and build that confidence that he knows that we have in him and he has in us. Now what I've done is taken a core sample outside of the critical root zone and what I'm going to do is take one now inside the critical root zone that has been buried for eight months. I'm going to go down. Oh wow, that's a lot easier. And we can begin to see a huge difference. Look at here. This whole layer right here is nice and dark and filled with organic matter, some rooting. It's only been eight months, one season. As you can see, this is not quite as tight packed. It's got some roots in it. Got down here, and as soon as we get down below, maybe eight, 10, 12 inches, then we get back into the hard pack stuff. And eventually, this tree will get down into that area as well. But I submit to you that the area underneath the tree here is different than the area outside which means that the mulch has raised the freeze line, it has cooled the uh, soil temperature, and it has uh, preserved the moisture during times when it is very hot and very dry. And it makes all the difference in the world in the performance of the trees because they don't have to go searching for resources for their uh, uh, activities that support the ecosystem services that this owner wants. What do you want? Shade, beauty, and this is all a part of his front yard that everyone sees. Why is that important? Because it makes him look good. If it makes him look good, it makes him feel good. And that's what tree preservation is all about, providing those services that make your customer feel good. Now, before we leave, as a courtesy to him, we're going to do a quick walk through down by the driveway. He has a tennis court back here. We're going to look at some of those things and we're going to recommend. We've already got one tree protection action, which is a, 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 a biostimulant treatment to the bark, which is supposed to eliminate some of this uh, insect and disease staining that you see here and some of the bird damage and other things that we see. The tree itself will begin to protect with its own resources now that we've got this area protected around it, immediately underneath it, and it's got enough leaves where it can make energy produce the nutrients necessary and be a healthy tree. Remember, healthy trees don't get sick. All right, we have talked about looking for potential problems that you can use to expand your tree preservation um, arsenal of solutions that you're gonna propose. Here's one right here that is very obvious. This is a freeze crack where you've had a root collar covered and smothered you can see here when we pull 
takes the soil away. Boy, we've got, ah, here's, here's our problem here, and we'll have to point this out. Look here, it's got fabric. Our ANSI standards say that this is not to be practiced for purposes of tree preservation and preserving mo uh, uh, moisture. Now, underneath it, we've got plenty of roots. Look at the roots. See here? We've got plenty of rooting. The problem is that the collar is covered, smothered, and now we can see from this that it is strangled. Look at that. Look at that root right there. That root right there was supposed to go lateral. Instead, it has come around here and is strangling. So that is a potential problem that we'll point out to him. What do we do? We have to do a root collar excavation. We have to expose the root collar and find out what, uh, how many of these roots could be encircling and strangling the tree and preventing it from taking the moisture up. The moisture gets underneath the bark, it's wicked up underneath it here, and during the freeze and dry uh, um, uh, cycles in our weather pattern, all of this is a danger signal. This tree may or may not make it. Many times in tree preservation, my fellow uh, uh, arborist, this, you're not gonna be able to have a final pronouncement. You're gonna look into the canopy, look here. Dead branches, dead branches, dead branches. Look all through here. Dead branches, dead branches. This one right here, the whole thing is dead. Look at that. All right, I'm not gonna pull that out of there. He'll get mad at me if, he, if, if I do at this particular point because he hasn't, we're not, he, he's not convinced that he's got a problem. Here's another part of the freeze damage here. And this is, many times you're not gonna be able to give him long-term solutions. What you can do is buy the owner another year or two or three or several seasons where this tree can be preserved before it meets its ultimate end. These types of maintenance practices sentence the tree to a half-life, and yes, it may have to eventually be replaced, but right now we can buy him some time with the tree protection actions that we've already used in his yard, and we're gonna use them again here. Here is a river birch that has been attacked in the same way with the mechanical devices, uh, usually mowers and weed whackers, and they've done damage here. We've got some, a sprout right here that probably rotted off, but this is a real good example of what happens. See the root right here? It's coming around. It's not uh, headed out laterally. It's encircling the tree, and it's gonna strangle it. This is grass competition all the way up to the tree, and unless he decides to do the same sort of process that we subjected the other trees to, then he's gonna have the same problems with this one. And there's two more up along the edge of the uh, driveway there. And as we go back this way, we see another one. And so we could prepare a nice uh, a bid on these four or five river birches and fruit trees and give him a nice package that we could do at the same time when we come back to incorporate the mulch into those critical root zones in, under the maples that we did last year. And then while we're here at a very good price, we could do the same process of root collar, aeration decompaction, topsoil, and biostimulation. Yep, here it is. There it is right there. Now that landscape fabric is going to do you some damage. And as you can see from the collar on the tree, that you've already got roots that are wrapping around, strangling the tree. There's decay 
and then you've got these this freeze damage that you see in different places all the way up. This is a dogwood and it is especially uh, prone to this. It's budding out but once again we're looking to buy the owner some additional time before this has to be removed and replaced at great expense. Okay. All right we've got plastic underneath this tree and the only reason that we're over here we were just fixing to uh, pack up and leave but look at that. Now you can see some rooting up under there. And here's a rock that's grown in there. But let's step back from this tree. This is uh, looks like another another oak, a type of oak tree, I think. A maple tree like the others. Okay, he's planted another maple, but let's step back from this just a few feet and you're gonna see something that's a little bit disturbing. And that is, it's lean toward the house. All right, I'm standing right here beside the house. That's a stucco wall, particularly uh, susceptible to um, this kind of damage where a tree falls up against it, scrapes it down, and it becomes a very expensive repair. And so this is part of the hazard assessment report that we will submit to the owner that includes root collars, incorporation, and additional um, biostimulation to the trunks to prevent additional damage, save him money, increase his ecosystem services, the beauty that he wants here, and give him what he wants to make a beautiful place to live. Comfort, beauty, safety, that's what it's all about.